So the Nissan RB26 was quite an outstanding engine and it's certainly popular when it comes to upgrades and mods, finding its way into lots of different projects. The RB26 had a production run spanning from about 1989 to 2002 and it was fitted to stunning cars like the GTR R32. The RB26 was homologated so it could be used in the Group A touring car races, which basically meant you had a very well designed base engine to work from. Most of the mods that you would want to do to max the power had already been done at the factory, leaving you with a fantastic base to work from. So in this video, we're going to look at some of the best mods and upgrades you can get for the RB26, just to help you create the ultimate project car and to get you going in the right direction, avoiding many of the common pitfalls that people fall into when they start doing mods and upgrades to any car. <laughs> It's interesting when it comes to projects, the RB26 has often found its way into other cars like the Nissan 300ZX, the 350Z, and the Nissan Silvia. Tuning houses like Nismo came along, they took the RB26, they reboard it out and made a 2.8 litre version of the engine. And it was able to produce a very reliable, very stable 500 horsepower and 540 Nms of torque. So the RB26 was a logical advancement to the popular RB25. Nissan had taken the criticisms of weak spots on the RB25 and improved them and made the RB26 much better. It had the longer stroke of two millimeters and that enabled an extra 0.1 litre capacity in the engine hence creating the RB26 a logical development from the RB25. It will generally rev much higher than its counterparts on most of the RB25 engines because it uses solid lifters as opposed to the hydraulic lifters. There were a few hydraulic lifters and solid lifters available on the RB25 version but in the main the RB26 comes with lifters that enable it to rev to much higher levels and swapping out the lifters on the older RB25 was a real pain. So it's just nice to have an engine that's got these minor tweaks that just give you a much better base to work from. So there was a gold top N1 edition of the RB26, which is generally regarded as one of the best engines available in the RB26 lineup, certainly the one you want for your project. It has a better oil pump and water pump, a Garrett M24 turbo, and general refinements to the engine block, which improve the oil supply and the cooling ability of the engine. But the standard engine is extremely well built for a production car. And we've seen projects reaching 600 brake horsepower on stock internals, providing the engine is supplied with enough fuel and enough air to match that power requirement. We're often asked whether you should go with a MAP or an AFM when it comes to metering the airflow coming into the engine. There is a big debate online as to which is the best. Please let us know in the comments what your feelings are on the subject. But after talking to a lot of people and a lot of tuners and seeing a lot of project engines, the AFMs can generally be a bit of a pain to work with and most people People prefer to go with the map sensor. The stock turbos are generally good for about 340 horsepower. Over that those stock turbos will start to struggle and you should be looking out for upgrades to the turbo. The N1 however came with a turbo that can easily push about 400 horsepower. Again in the comments let me know what your experiences are with these engines, how much have you managed to extract from those turbos and was it reliable or did you have other problems and issues? So if you're building an RB26 to use as a daily driver you obviously Obviously don't want the extremely high power levels, you want a car that's reliable and relatively easy to live with. So in terms of turbo upgrades on a car that you're using each day, the HKS 2510 or the Garrett T3 are pretty good options on the RB26. They don't have very much lag at the low end, they respond quite nicely and they give you a really good spread of torque and power. So clutches are obviously an area that take quite a bit of abuse when you've got the power up on your RB26. So the clutch isn't technically an engine mod, but if you're pushing power up to the 300, 4, 5, 600 brake horsepower levels, it's certainly worth thinking about getting a better clutch. And there's a really nice range of triple plate clutches out there that handle the power really nicely and they aren't too heavy in operation, so they're quite a pleasant clutch to live with in everyday traffic and driving conditions. So around about 400 horsepower, it's relatively easy to get to those power levels on the RB26. Going beyond 
400 horsepower seems to require quite a bit of investment. We've seen people setting aside a whole year's worth of salary as a budget just to do that, to get the power beyond the 400 horsepower. Let me know in the comments what your experiences have been. Have you found an easy route to getting over 400 horsepower from your RB26 engine? I really want to create the ultimate guide to tuning the RB26. So the article on our site is always being updated with tips and feedback from our readers and our viewers. And let me know in the comments and I will do another video that's more detailed and goes into the RB26 with a tuning goal of 400 to 600 horsepower and we'll detail all of the mods that we need to do in order to achieve that safely and keep the car drivable and enjoyable in the daily commute. We do find that cutting corners on your RB26 project is a false economy. You cut corners, you're going to end up with costs, things are going to break, you're going to have all sorts of problems and that thing that saved you a bit of money that you've skimped on will come back and bite you. So generally spec everything carefully before you begin. Make sure you have a clear plan and that all of the mods that you've done will support the power figure targets that you've set for your RB26 project. Engine management is absolutely essential on any kind of serious RB26 tuning project. The standard ECU is okay, but when you start pushing the power up, you really do need to go to an aftermarket engine management. And there's a lot of different options out there. Please let me know in the comments what you found has worked particularly well. But the Link G4 Plus is always cropping up when we talk to RB26 owners and what they've done to their engines. Even just going with the G4, as long as it's got knock control, will go a long way to increasing the flexibility of the ECU and the control you've got over the power that the engine will produce. The Cyvex ECU is also a fantastic option. It's probably up there in price in relation to all of the others. So it's quite a bit of investment, but it does offer data logging. If you've got a very serious power target that you're aiming for, it's certainly worth investing in a premium ECU like the Cyvex. So should you upgrade with a twin turbo setter or just a large big turbo? There is a massive debate. Every owner seems to have their own opinion, their own account as to what is the best option for your RB26 project. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this. But to Talking to people, we, we sort of feel that there's, there's good arguments for having a twin turbo setup and for going for a large turbo. And especially as turbo developments have come on so much in the years that have passed since the RB26 was first launched, twin scroll turbos offer fantastic flexibility, plenty of low down spool up and decent higher levels of power figures. So the twin scroll seems to be a really good compromise between having a twin turbo setup and having a large single turbo. The old understanding that big turbos had lots of lag but were able to produce big power and twin turbos were much more responsive and easy to set up and tune are pretty much myths. There's so many exceptions to the rule. We just can't make sweeping statements like that. And I'd love to hear what you think about the debate as to which turbo setup is the best on your RB26 project. It does seem though that if you want the really high power figures for drag racing competition use and where the car is generally used in the upper RPM ranges, the larger turbo does seem to offer more than having a smaller set of twin turbos or even going with a, a twin scroll setup. We've been told that boost is best run or best limited to about nine PSI on the stock engine and stock internals. If you've managed to go beyond that, please let me know. How was the car to live with? Did you have any other problems? Did you do any strengthening work on the engine? And what power levels did that allow you to achieve? If you alter the compression ratio of the engine and you fit stronger components, you can obviously hike the power levels you're aiming for enormously compared to other projects where you're trying to work with the stock engine. So what's the current choice for a turbo for an RB26 project? Well, the Borg Warner EFR certainly keeps cropping up when we talk to people. On a twin turbo setup, the turbo is split between different banks of the engine. So cylinders one, two, and three will feed into one part of the scroll and then four, five, and six will feed into the other part. And that has a nice effect on the scavenging of the engine and just allows you to make a little bit more power than maybe you could do with a a conventional single turbo setup. So twin turbos are fiddly to spec, to set up, to make sure the airflow is right and that the valve timing is spot on for. But you will really reap dividends if you invest the time and effort in getting a decent twin scroll setup, especially if you're using it as a daily driver. So if you want to take it from 400 to say 650 horsepower, what sort of mods do we start looking at having to do? Well, a turbo like the GT2530 was certainly a good option and the newer 
Borg Warner EFR 8174 or the larger EFR 8374. And we've been told that they are good for 500 to 800 horsepower. At around about the 650 horsepower mark, you should be looking at improving the head gasket strength. So there's a 1.2 millimeter head gasket constructed of metal and NGK do a really nice range of spark plugs. So we've been told that the NGK heat range gate is a decent level for the spark plug when hitting 1.4 psi of boot so again the aftermarket ecu is critical for these higher power projects you certainly wouldn't want to skimp on having a decent ecu to handle all of the ignition timing and all of the other components in the engine that you need to set up to make those power levels work you also need to uprate the fuel rail so a high performance fuel rail 1000 cc injectors and a fuel pump that can handle about 200 80 litres per hour and that should happily cope with turbos like the GT 2860S or the GT 2871R turbo. So I'll be interesting to know what you think about camshaft upgrades on the RB26. The variable valve timing and the general setup of the engine lends itself nicely to tuning. Do you feel that you need to go for a sportier cam profile in order to extract the most power or have you successfully done that on stock camshaft profiles? And if you did switch the profile Profiles. I would love to know what profiles you went for on the exhaust and the intake duration and what power levels that helped you to reach. When you start taking the RB26 over 600 horsepower, up to about the 900 horsepower mark, you really do start to need to invest some serious money and thought and planning to go into your RB26 engine. The HKS T04Z turbo or the T8834D turbo, or if you want a twin scroll option, the Borg Warner EFR9180 would work well. A stroker kit will obviously allow you to increase the capacity of the RB26 engine. You're looking at flowing and porting the cylinder head. So we've got a video and we've got other videos coming up on cylinder head improvements, getting the flow optimized through the head and across the valves and various other mods that you can do to the engine. So I won't go into too much detail on this RB26 video, but certainly stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on those videos as they're released. So head work, forged internals and a big valve conversion in the head will all be needed to get the power beyond that 800 horsepower mark. We have heard of people successfully getting 800 horsepower on a stock RB26. RB26. So please let us know what your experience has been with that and whether you think that's a bit optimistic or whether that is easily doable and which RB26 version of the engine that that was particularly on. But the big advantage of the RB26 is just the fact that it loves to rev. If the engine is nicely balanced with the upgraded components you've got, you can certainly raise that high red line even further and exploit that top end power even more. So there's a few weak spots to look out for on the RB26. So under heavy load, the oil pump is prone to fail and that causes oil starvation which can be catastrophically fatal for the engine so don't skimp out make sure you've got an oil pump that's capable of delivering enough oil some people say the n1 spec oil pump is sufficient for most projects others want to go even beyond that and look at a proper aftermarket oil pump just to ensure that there is no danger of getting that oil starvation issue so tom i jun and g ready all have upgraded oil pumps available for the rb26 and they all work really well it'd be interesting to put them head to head and just see which is the best which flows the best which is the most reliable so maybe that's something we'll come back to in a future video if you've got experience with any of those different oil pumps let us know in the comments love to hear your experiences and what you've done to your rb26 and how you've got on with it and how you've overcome any of the problems that have propped up ignition coils often fail now that will manifest itself as a flat spot or a misfire on one or two cylinders if one starts to fail you can assume that they're all about to go so don't just replace one get the whole set replaced at the same time. So I must stress that you need to service these engines. They're high performance engines. They require a lot of care and maintenance. Pay special attention to the oil grade. We've got a couple of videos on different oil grades and um, what the oil actually does inside the engine beyond just lubricating it. It's quite interesting when you discover just how much oil does and specifying the correct sort of oil can make a big difference to your success, especially when you're tuning your engine to those much higher power figures. So I really hope this video has been useful to you. It's helped you to get your RB26 tuning project off the ground. You've perhaps got some power figures to aim for. You've got an idea on which budget will 
fit your selected power gain and hopefully we flagged up as well some of the best options just to avoid you making a lot of the common pitfalls there are so many rb26 parts out there we certainly can't cover them all in a short video like this please let us know in the comments what your experience has been so that we can glean all of this together and maybe do more videos in the future focused on the rb26 and how to get the most from it we'd love you to stay tuned so please subscribe if you haven't done so and we'll see you in the next video and don't forget to boot that like button because that really helps us to get out there thanks for watching